Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at this Foxwell NT809VT bidirectional scan tool. So this was provided to me by the distributor, but they're not compensating me for this video and they're not reviewing it before I post it. If you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these, I'll put a link to it in the description on Amazon. If you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost anything extra. So on the side here, it says screen is seven inch diagonal, daylight readable, color LCD screen, 1024 by 600 pixel. Operating system is Android 9.0. Processor is four core CPU, 1.3 gigahertz, has one giga RAM, 32 gig storage, 4,000 milliamp hour battery. So it comes in this blow molded case. Open it up. Here we have a manual. Here's the scan tool. It comes with a USB Type-C charge cable, and it comes with a Bluetooth OBD2 reader. So this scan tool is targeted towards home mechanics and DIYers and such, but I want to give my background a bit. About 25 years ago, I did work in a shop. I was an alignment technician. I did a lot of suspension stuff then. So I don't have any professional experience with these types of tools. So I'm coming at it from the perspective of a DIYer. So keep that in mind as you're watching this, but you don't have to be an expert to use these types of tools. You can learn to use them. You can find codes. You can research those codes online, and you can fix problems yourself. So let's get the manual out here. So on the back, we have a warranty card. Here's a quick start guide in the manual. So according to the Amazon description, this is updated for the year 2022. They provide updates for three years for free. After that, you do have to pay for updates, but it will continue working on older cars. So before using this, you want to make sure it's charged. It says it has this one touch complaint. So it looks like if you have any feedback, you can tap this and enter feedback in and send it right to them. Just contact us. This has different connection methods. This one uses the Bluetooth. It talks about registering your scanner and updating your scanner. Here's diagnostic operations. Before diagnostic, make sure the ignition switch is turned to on, the engine is off, the vehicle battery voltage is between 10 and 14 volts, scanner is correctly connected to your vehicle. Don't connect or disconnect when the ignition is on or running. So you want to establish communication with the vehicle with the Bluetooth, identify the vehicle either by VIN or manually, find the control modules installed on the vehicle either by quick scan or manual selection, start the test and make records of test data when necessary. And this talks about remote support. So here's the user manual. So you want to read through this so you can make sure you understand everything to use it safely. So this talks about the components here. This has the tech specs. We read those on the side earlier. Getting started, talks about the menu. So I'm going to read through this on my own, then I'll bring up any issues I read in there as I'm demonstrating it. Let's look at the scanner itself. So it has this, it's kind of a rubberized plastic on the sides. You can kind of hold it like this. It has a screen. On top, we have power button, USB Type-C, USB-A. We have a kickstand on the back like so. And it looks like you can put that at any level. Speaker. I'll plug it into my USB charger. Now this does not come with a charger, but you can use any phone charger. I have this little charging thing here. Okay, so a light turned on is drawing 4,600 milliamps. Okay, so it's charging at 1.87. Well, it's jumping around there. So I'm going to let this charge up a bit, then we'll come back and I'll do the initial setup. Okay, so I've let this charge up a bit. I'll turn it on. So we have a startup screen. I'm going to go kill the lights to get rid of the glare. Okay, so we have a disclaimer here. You'll want to read through it. It says, please create your account. So I'll hit register. So we have a user registration page and you can type everything in here on the keyboard. But since this runs Android, I've plugged in a USB keyboard. So I can just type in my registration information. So I'm going to do that. So I hit send code and it brought me to the next page. In order to send the code, it needs to be on Wi-Fi. So here I'll set up my Wi-Fi network. And I mentioned I plugged in a keyboard and it's a wireless keyboard and it also supports wireless mouse. Okay, so now I'm connected to the internet. I'll hit back. I'll hit send code. I'm going to enter my verification code and now I'll enter password. I'll agree to the terms and I'll click free registration. And now my account is created. So I'll hit okay. It says activate serial number. I'll submit. It says product is activated successfully. So I'll hit okay. So I'll go back to the home screen now. I'll go to the upper right where it says update. And there are lots of updates available, so I'm just going to upgrade all. So I'm going to cut the video until this is done, and then we'll come back and dive into it. Okay, so after the updates, it restarted, and one of those was a system update, and it says, serial number is not found. Please connect the VCI dongle to the tablet via USB cable first. So I'm going to unplug the USB cable. I'll plug it into the back of the VCI. There's a USB-C port in it, and then I'll plug the USB into the tablet. Okay, it says bonded, and now it's completing the boot. So now if I go to update, let's see what we have. And it looks like here, there are more updates. So you're not completely done updating until you go into the updates and you don't have any more updates available. It's possible when you do one update, another update was dependent upon it. So before I do that, I'll swipe to the right and it says firmware update, I'll tap on that. And it says VCI firmware upgrade, I'll tap on that. And now it's upgrading the firmware on the VCI and I do have it plugged in still. Okay, it says the VCI firmware updated successfully. I'll hit exit. So now I'm going to finish these updates, then I'm going to get acquainted with it, and then I'll come back and we'll go over it. 
Okay, so here I am at my 2000 Land Cruiser, and I'm going to plug in the VCI to the OBD2 port. So the port is under the dash here, back here. So that's connected, and the car is off. So it's not uncommon for cars to have them like down here under the dash, somewhere under the dash. If you have trouble finding it, just search online for it. So now I'll turn the car to on. Turn the scan tool on. So there are many things you can do with this. One is scan for code, so we'll hit diagnostic. And on a lot of cars, especially newer cars, you can hit this VIN and hit automatic read. And I'm not going to hit that because it'll actually take a while, but it will try and scan and find the VIN. But this vehicle is older and it doesn't have that feature. So you can go to manual entry and enter in the VIN here. And this will store the last VIN you entered. So the VIN is located many places on a car. I think an easy place to find your VIN is on your vehicle registration. Most people carry it in their glove box or their console. You can pull that out and get the VIN off of it easily. If you're outside the car, look at the bottom of the windshield. I'm going to cancel this. I've already tested it with this car. I'm actually going to go into vehicle history. So I'll go over here. I'll go to shop manager vehicle history and then I'm going to pick the 2000 Land Cruiser. And then on here I'll hit diagnose. So now I'll do a quick scan and this is scanning for codes. So if you have a check engine light you might do this. Okay so this checks out. So here we can save this. So I'll just hit save. So let's actually go back I'll say exit, and here we can go to diagnosis, and this will give us similar options. We can go to powertrain, oops, and this will break down what we saw earlier. So this was all in one list, but we can go to engine and ECT, we'll hit OK. And here we have read codes, which we already did. We have live data, so if we tap on that, we can see different things here. We can also do active test. So this is where you get the bi-directional control. So we have fuel pump here, let's try that one, we'll hit OK. Now you're gonna find certain things are not supported. So now these are parameters we can track while we're looking at this. So we can look at like the injector. I mean, this doesn't really matter for what we're doing. I'm not sure if any of this matters, but it does make you choose one at least. So I'll just hit okay. So I chose, I think it was the top one there. And now we have fuel pump test. And if you look at the bottom here, it says on off, I'll hit on. And then I'll hit off. So I'm sure this did not come through on the microphone, but I could hear the fuel pump kick on and off when I pressed on off there. So that's the bi-directional control. You can do an actual test of the fuel pump. So different cars are gonna have different things you can test here. Let's look at like cruise control. On this one, we can only read live data. So here we can see the cruise control parameters and we'll dig into how that looks. We'll go to chassis, ABS. Here we have live data, active test. So we have all these ABS solenoids here. There are even things like the ABS warning light. That's a super easy one to test. We'll hit OK. And we just need to pick some parameter to track, and I'll hit OK. So on this next screen, we'll see this ABS motor relay parameter here. I'll look at the dash, and I'll hit on. And you'll see that light will turn on. And then I'll hit off, and the light will turn off. So that's a couple examples of bi-directional control. You could spend literally hours going through all this. So now I want to show another use for this. I'll go to powertrain, engine and ECT. I'll hit okay. Now I'm going to start this up. And then I want to go to live data. Then I'll hit all data. And then here I'll scroll down somewhere on here is AT fluid temp. So if you're doing a drain and refill of the automatic transmission on a Toyota, there's a step in the process that has to occur when the transmission fluid is at a specific temperature. So I'll go here and I'll hit OK. And now we're going to have that live test and we'll see the temperature here. It says NA right now. Now this does have that kickstand on it. So we'll be able to put that under the car. You can also hang this off your steering wheel like so. Actually, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to add something else here just to make sure that I'm still connected in case I got disconnected. Let's say engine speed, coolant temp. I wonder if something got disconnected when I started this, so let me go back. Okay, so I just went back to the home screen and got back to this point. So here we can see the different parameters here. We have the engine speed. So if I rev this up, we'll see that go up. Okay, there's a little bit of a delay there. Then we have the coolant temp and then the automatic transmission fluid temp. So this is showing the data. You can also graph the data. So here we're looking at the data on a graph. This isn't super exciting data to graph because temperatures typically are going to be pretty steady, but you can see the engine RPM here going up and down. We can go to the coolant temperature. It's not going to do much. It's going to look like a line. And here's the automatic transmission fluid. And we can do multi-graph. This will have multiple at the same time, or we can merge graphs. So if you want to look at relations of things, you can do merge graph and it will show the graphs together. Then we can also record. Now rev this up a little bit. You can see the RPMs got really high, relatively speaking, and I'll hit okay. Okay, so now I'll go back to the home screen. I'll hit data manager. Here's data playback. 
So these would be for the data points. We'll hit OK, and here we can watch those. So you can connect this up, go on a road test, track parameters and record them, and then come back and analyze those. That way, when you're driving, you can focus on your driving, and then when you're done with your test, you can just sit and analyze the data. You don't have to do both at the same time. So let's head over to my other car that's more modern. Okay, so here I'm at my 2016 Subaru Outback. I plug the VCI in down here. I'll tap on Diagnostic. I'll hit the Engine Start button once. I'm not starting it. And I'll hit VIN. I'll hit Automatic Read. Okay, it says North America. I'll hit that. It says vehicle type. I'll hit yes. Here I can do a quick scan. This is similar to what it did on the other car. Okay, that's finished. And let's go through this just a little bit. We have like the tire pressure monitor system. We can look at that. And it says tire one, air pressure low, normal mode. The status here is history, so this is not active. So if I tap on one of these, it will dive me deeper into it. So I tapped on the ECM engine. And here we can read codes, clear codes. We can look at the live data. So then we can do active tests here. Here we have the radiator fan relay. Sometimes I'll give instructions like this. So we want the gear in park or neutral, vehicle speed zero. We'll hit okay. I'll tap on radiator fan relay. I'll hit start. So it's running that test. I can hear the fan running. Now it says test failed, status time out but I did hear the fan running so I know it works so it has lots of things it has like the active grill shutter control so if you have that fancy feature you can test it this car does not have it here's a good example here I'll tap that I'll say okay it will say loading I'll say open and it says the selected function is not supported by the vehicle model so you'll find that quite a bit when you test things. There are going to be features that don't work on your specific car. So let me go back a ways. We can also go into control modules. It gives us those similar options. We'll go to the IPC combination meter. Let's end with something fun here. So we can go to that active test. Let's do speedometer. And then at the bottom here, let's do 120. So if we pop up here to the speedometer now, it says 120. So we'll zoom in here. We'll snap a picture of that. Then we can pretend our Subaru can do 120 miles an hour. So I can also do others. I can say 80, 40, back down to zero. So there's lots of things here. We have color check. So you can see we have white, black, red. If we look at the center screen here, if I tap these, it will change the color. So we can look for dead pixels in the display. And there's just all sorts of things you can do here. So it's really impressive. Now, if we go back here to the main screen, it does have this maintenance area. And this has things for specific vehicles. So like ABS service, some cars you go into an ABS service when you're doing like bleeding or things like that. So this gives you quick access to those maintenance features for different types of cars. So you can look through here before you dig into the individual sensors and see if it's, so I haven't found a lot of these are compatible with my Subaru. But if we go into one, let's say oxygen sensor test, this will show the cars you can do that on. Now I do want to demonstrate one more thing here is this was connected up with Bluetooth, but you can use it wired. So I have the USB cord plugged in here and I have it plugged into the VCI with the USB-C. I did this before I turned it on and the Bluetooth is not lit up. I can go to diagnostic. I'll do the VIN search. Found my car. We can do the scan and now it's scanning. So I did some tests. It seemed like it might have been slightly faster with the cord, but it didn't seem to make a huge difference. I didn't have a definitive answer if it was. So I can't see a big reason to plug this in. I'm going to be using it with Bluetooth most of the time. So that's just a sampling of what you can do with this scanner. This thing's incredibly powerful and it will probably take me a little time to master it completely, but I was able to figure out a lot just playing around with it. And if you have something like a check engine light, it's super easy to use. You hit the diagnostic, you read the codes, it'll bring up the error codes and you can look through those and then you can research them and try and fix your problem. Now, occasionally there was an acronym I had to look up or something, and that's no big deal. It's just part of the learning process. So one more thing I want to show on here that I thought was really cool. So I'll go to the next screen here, and we'll go to video scope. So I just have one of these cheap USB boroscopes. I'll plug it in here. And here we could use this on an engine to inspect cylinders or something, and you can record or take pictures. So this is meant to be used with like a laptop or something. And when I use it on a car, I have to drag my laptop out to the car. I'll no longer have to do that. I can use this more rugged scan tool. I can plug it right in here. I can do my recording, take my pictures, and I'm good to go. So that's a very handy extra feature of this thing. You can also plug pretty much any USB webcam in here. Say you're trying to read some sort of a serial number off a component under the dash. You can plug this in, stick this in where you can reach with your hand snap a picture of it you could also hook a usb microscope into this too so that's the foxwell nt 809 bt scan tool this thing's very impressive and it's a great tool to add to the diy arsenal i'll obviously use this on my own cars but this will also be nice so i can help out friends and family so that's all i'm going to cover in this video if you have any questions please leave them in the comments if you like this video please click like if you haven't subscribed to my channel i'd appreciate it if you could do that thanks for watching until next time goodbye